Hey budget gardeners, Rita Loca here. Join me today as I do a big winter sewing reveal of 2023. I started my winter sewing in January and finished up around February. This is my third year winter sewing and I only winter sew perennials. And the reason for that is because I start a lot of my flowers, a lot of my vegetables, indoors under lights. Therefore, I just don't want to do a lot of perennials indoors. I really don't have a lot of room for the perennials. Also, perennials typically need a cold stratification period, and I really don't want to have to be putting the seeds in the refrigerator or the freezer to give them that cold stratification period. I just want to set the seeds outside and forget them. So I'm going to show you all of my perennials. Keep in mind they're still quite small. The reason for that is it's mid-April and it's still very cold here in New Hampshire. But I am excited to show you what progress there is in my milk jug. All right, let's start with the first milk jug. What we have here is Gallardia. It's Grandiflora mixed. And so far only, it looks like three have really sprouted. But I can see closely that there's a few more that are just barely starting to sprout. So what I'm going to do is, I, at the end of this video, I do plan on closing all of these back up because we still have some really cold nights and I want to make sure that these little greenhouses stay warm. Okay, let's do the next one. Here we have false indigo, which is a baptisia and it's a purple color. I used duct tape to seal all these and I used garden marker. So that helped with um, making sure that the tag is legible. And I have a ton in here. I'm so excited. And what I'm planning on doing is thinning these out. And I will be doing the thinning out when the plants are quite small. I'm going to put them right into six packs. And I'm just going to let them grow on in the six packs. And eventually I'll bump them up. All right, the next one we have is a Dianthus. And there's no specific name to this. Quite a few of these, I collected the seeds for them, so I don't have uh, an actual name. I might just have a color. So in this case, it's a white color dianthus, and I put down that it's fuzzy, but I guess um, it's just not a normal dianthus that you would find. It, it has a special um, look to it, and for most of these, I plan on putting pictures on the screen so you can see what they look like. So that's what that looks like. Okay, this next one we have is another Gallardia Grandiflora mixed. We have a lot in there. Pretty exciting. I love false indigo. It I know with this particular plant, when you start it from seed, it might take a few years. Actually, for a lot of the perennials, it might take one or two years for um, the plants to flower. But I have patience. I collected most of these seeds, so I'm perfectly fine waiting. A lot of germination in there. Okay, this next one is Echinacea. It's a Paradiso or Paradiso Super Duper is the name. That's clearly one that I bought the seeds for that. That's why I have a very specific name to it. And they're coming up. They look good. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. This is a Wanda mix. It's a primrose. These are a little on the smaller side, but you should be able to see them. All right, it's like Christmas over here. What else do we have? We have an ox eye Shasta daisy. Sometimes it's hard to get the uh, duct tape to come off, which can be a good thing. It keeps the um, milk jugs nice and secure during the winter months. 
All right, we have a few little sprouts in there. The next one I have is a Dianthus, and it looks like it's a red and, uh, it's, I wrote down red and double pink, so again, it's one that I collected the seeds from it. Oh yeah, these look wonderful. Look at that. Quite a bit of germination in there. I do sow my seeds very heavily uh, because for the reason that I will thin them out. I've done it in the past and I've, it's been fine for me. Okay, so this one is a Shasta daisy also, the oxide daisy. I planted multiple, um, just trying to make sure this is in view for you, multiple milk jugs of certain plants that I had a lot of seeds of. So that looks pretty good. Even if I sowed them pretty heavily, I didn't want to sow them so heavily. So I might have done it over a number of milk jugs. Okay, next up we have Echinacea Pow Wow Wild Berry is the name of this one. I have had to water these a number of times in the last, I'd say, two or three weeks. We had some temperatures that were quite hot that were in the 80s. So I wanted to make sure that these didn't dry out. Okay. It looks pretty good. We have maybe four or five plants in there, it looks like. Next up, we have bee balm. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. It says feel and tin mix. Bealartin. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. We have a lot of germination in here. It's fantastic. Very exciting. I had so much luck with winter sowing last year. I had thinned everything out. I put them in six packs and I bumped them up into individual like three or four inch pots. Then I had nowhere to put them and I wanted them to grow on. So what I did was I created a nursery. And that's where I have all my winter sown plants that I had sown two winters ago. So these guys are going to need a home. <laughs> we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with them. Okay, so this is another uh, Gallardia grandiflora mixed. I guess I must have had a ton of these seeds. They already are starting to get their second, their true set of leaves on there. Look at that. Wonderful. Next up, I have Obedient Plant. It's a purple color. Sometimes people call it a turtle head. Looks pretty good to me. Like some happy little plants in there. Okay, we have yet some more false indigo or baptisia, purple color. I think there's still time, like I said, for a lot of these perennials to still germinate. So I'm not going to be so quick to be pricking out these plants and getting them out of here. I'm going to give, give them some time. Okay, next up is some more um, bee balm. Looks like it's a pink color. It's that one that I can't say. It's Bialartin mix. Many, many of these milk jugs uh, have been used over for two seasons now. So they've, I've made very good use of recycling here. And I intend to save them again and see if I can get a third season out of them. Look at that. That's wonderful. My goodness. I'm going to have so, mu so much bee balm.
Good thing I've been making flower beds in the perimeter of my yard. I now have space for all this stuff. Okay, next up we have Coreopsis and it's a yellow color and it says, let me see if I can pronounce this. Lanceolata, that's what it looks like. Lanceolata, okay. When I first started winter sewing, I used to put tape all the way around the milk jug and I realized you don't really need to do that. It's, it's almost overkill. As you can see, these, you know, you just really just need a couple of small pieces to hold the, um, the top and the bottom together. Looks pretty good. Nice germination, very good germination, in fact. Okay, we have more oxide daisy. A lot of plants in there. I'm really happy. I had very good success as I did last year with my winter sowing for my perennials. This is another oxide daisy. When it comes to winter sowing, plants are going to germinate when they are ready. So you'll have some plants that germinate quicker and some plants that germinate much slower. I remember last year I had columbine, quite a few jugs of columbine, and I didn't think they were going to germinate, but they did. So give it some time with your, mil your milk jugs or whatever your winter sowing in. Sometimes it just takes time, time for things to germinate. Okay, so this is the oxide daisy. Just like the other oxide daisy milk jugs. Very good germination. There might be a little bit of algae growth on them, and that's not going to harm the plant. It's perfectly fine for that to be there. Okay, this looks like false indigo, uh, baptisia. And it looks like I had collected some seeds from a redbud tree. So I'm not quite sure if the redbud tree has germinated. But we'll see. I want to say most of this is the false indigo of Baptisia, but time will tell. There's definitely, there's definitely life in there. There's definitely germination happening. So I'm a happy person when it comes to that. All right, so here we have some Delphinium Pacific Giant mix. I think this is one that is going to take its sweet time to germinate. If you look closely, let me point it out if I can. Right there. There are, there are two, maybe three plants that are germinating. So, um, and they just barely started germinating. I, ju I just checked this jug a few days ago and there was no signs of life. So, I am feeling pretty good about that, that there might be more plants in there that have yet to come. Okay, next we have Echinacea Double Decker Pink. Looks like possibly, there's definitely one, possibly two. So I'm going to point it out. There's definitely one there and possibly two plants in there. I'll have to do an update video on these plants because I'm feeling pretty confident that we're going to see a lot more growth over the next month. It's still very early here. I debated if I should do this video now or wait a month, but I wanted to give an update now just so you can see what's coming up and I can do another update video in a little while when things get bigger and there's more germination going on. This is the Coneflower Green Twister. That's a very striking flower. Very, very pretty. 
And I definitely have one, possibly two plants in here. Let's see if I can show you. So that's very cool. Now this one, I think was the first one to germinate out of, actually I know it, this was the very first milk jug to germinate for me. And I had very good luck with this last year as well. I highly recommend you try this with winter sowing. It is called English Daisy. It is so cute. It, I have some blooming right now that I winter sowed two years ago. I mean, look at that. Isn't that fantastic? It's just amazing. It's such a dainty, cute little flower. I love it. All right. We now have the Coreopsis and it's a yellow color. We looked at one before, Lanceolata. Very nice germination in there. And another Baptisia, False Indigo, purple color. I know there's different colors of Baptisia out there, but I really do like the purple colored one. Lots of great germination. And the trick with Baptisia is you always want to sow fresh seed. If you have seed that you collected and it sits around for too long and it's not fresh, it's very unlikely that it will germinate. So you want to make sure you're using fresh seed with Baptisia. Okay, next we have Echinacea, Butterfly Flowers, Paradise Mix. The Echinacea, all my Echinacea uh, winter sown jugs have just barely started showing signs of life. That's why a lot of them don't have many plants in them. They've just barely started sprouting. Although this one, this one has quite a few plants already. Check that out. Okay. Next up, we have another obedient plant, turtle head, purple color. Pretty sure I collected this one from a friend's house. And it looks like so far we have one plant in here, but I'm guessing more to come. Okay, so this one is a light pink mallow. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's right here. There's one little plant. There we go. It's right here. And so um, I had run out of milk jugs, and so I just used a juice a carton or juice jug. So I just used a juice jug. And I do see, I, I know I won't be able to easily show you, but there is another um, mallow in here that's sprouting. Let's see if we can open this guy. So that clearly tells me mallow is a um, slow to start when it comes to, yeah, when it comes to um, sprouting. This, I can, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it but there are quite a few sprouting in there. But at a minimum, you can see this one guy right down here is sprouting. Now we have hel helenium or sneezeweed. I don't know the exact percentage, but if I had to guess, I'd say Probably 70% of the perennials that I wintered sowed this year were from seeds that I collected, which is very neat. And I believe this was one of them. So they're just starting to sprout. But they're at the top of the, right there. I'm sure you can see them. So... At least we have a couple so far. Okay. 
And now I have an obedient plant, but it's a different color. It's a white one. Crystal Peak White. Yep, that looks, that looks really good. You can save so much money on perennials by starting them by seed, from seed. And if you don't have grow lights, what better way to do it than winter sowing, in my opinion? Even though I have the grow lights, I still, I just love this method for my perennials. Okay, this is false sunflower or heliopsis. And of course, a leaf somehow got in there. I believe this is just slow to germinate, but time will tell. So hopefully you can see, there's definitely one in there, but hopefully more to come. Okay, here's another, yet another obedient plant, purple turtle head. Seeing that I don't have any of this plant in my yard, I am overjoyed that I'm going to have a lot of this plant in my yard. And I might even have some to share with some friends and some family of mine. Definitely some plants in there. Next up is coneflower. It is the mellow yellow. I'm not going to point them out. I'm just going to open this up the best that I can. So there is, there's probably about, I'd say, five or six plants so far in there that have sprouted. This is Heliopsis sunflower, uh, sorry, false sunflower. And I can tell you there's one plant in there <laughs> and it is super teeny tiny. I'll put it up on the screen, but I'm not sure you'll be able to see it. Let's see, it's right down here. So, so far one, with hopefully more to come. Next up, we have the Echinacea. It's a purple and white mix. And there are a few plants that have sprouted. I'm just going to go like this and hopefully you should see them. So this is what is left of the winter sown jugs that don't appear to have any life in them yet. So time will tell. I think it's still too early. So I'm going to get, play the waiting game with them. I'm going to continue to water them. I'm going to keep them closed so they stay nice and warm. And I'll keep you posted on how these milk jugs do, if there's any uh, growth in them. And I'll also keep you posted on any of the milk jugs that we looked at today and show you how big the plants are getting. I hope you enjoyed this tour. I encourage you to try winter sowing this winter. And until then, make it a great day with gardening.